Alistair Black and Impact Wrestling. Yes, how long did it take for you going to talk about this? But Alistair Black has opened up on the possibility of him possibly signing with Impact Wrestling as well as a, a plethora of other companies he is considering. But also, what is interesting when it comes to Alistair Black potentially moving to Impact Wrestling or appearing for Impact Wrestling once his 90-day non-compete clause expires due to his WWE release, he has spoken about the desire to face two, two stars currently on the Impact roster in terms of a high-priority list of who Alistair Black would like to face off against in the near future which does open up the possibility of course of Alistair Black making some appearances with Impact Wrestling once his WWE non-compete clause expires so this all comes from a recent interview on the oral sessions with Renee Paquette. Alistair Black discussed his career options after his WWE release, potentially joining companies such as New Japan Pro Wrestling, Ring of Honor, Impact Wrestling, and more. And here are some of the comments that Alistair Black made. Now, he was first asked about his career options after his WWE release and did mention companies like Ring of Honor, Impact, New Japan Pro Wrestling, etc. as the companies he was interested in. This is what Alistair Black had to say, quote, I don't think the business, at least at the moment, will never be bigger than the WWE, but the landscape is not solely dominated by WWE, which is a great thing. I see so many good talents. I look at AEW and I see phenomenal newer generation combining with the older generation that I grew up watching. Guys like Chris Daniels and Kazarian. It's crazy seeing dudes like John Moxley, Kenny Omega going at it. Then there's all these independent companies, but not just independent companies, Ring of Honor, Impact. Everybody has their own identity. That is a very important thing because it's very difficult to have an identity or a business that was solely dominated by WWE, but they're doing it. That speaks volumes to the talent and creative vision that's out there. Creative vision is important considering some of the comments that Alistair Black has made about creativity and how he was shackled in WWE. Nevertheless, he's proud of what he was able to achieve despite this creativity and is excited about the potential of going into a company like an Impact Wrestling, like a Ring of Honor, like an AEW, potentially with some of those creative freedoms. Now, this is the really interesting thing that perked up the ears and eyes of the Impact Wrestling fans around the world. This is what Alistair Black had to say when he was talking about wrestlers he wants to work with in the future. This is what he had to say, quote, I want to get in the ring with Moose, Sammy Callahan, John Moxley, Kenny Omega, Chris Daniels. There's such an array of talent. I think Jungle Boy is great. Will Hobbs, I think he's awesome. Brian Cage, Brody King, Homicide. I would love to get in there with Homicide. I think Homicide is the OG and I love him and have a ton of respect. Eddie Kingston is another one. Now, he was asked about New Japan Pro Wrestling. A lot of people, myself included, have said that Alistair Black and New Japan, frankly is a pretty perfect fit considering of the the striking style that Alistair Black has and just that dark character I just the Japanese audience would just eat it up plus again that sort of not really strong style but it's just the hard hitting striking style that Alistair Black has worked with throughout his career just it's it fits perfectly with New Japan doesn't it this is what he had to say about New Japan quote I think it's no secret that I have a lot of love for New Japan. I think in several interviews I mentioned that, that I never grew up watching WWE. I watched New Japan on Eurosport. So when AEW had new Yuji Nagata, I was pretty envious of Mox because that was one of the guys I looked up to when I was younger. New Japan would be phenomenal. I love Japan and I miss Japan. Even thinking about it gives me butterflies because never did I feel more like a professional wrestler. And I can say that now again, that when I stepped off the plane in the airport and would drive down to Yokohama and would go to the dojo and start trading. It was great. So yeah, I don't know what the future holds at this point. I mean, I know certain parts of my future, but I'm not going to spoil things. So it's interesting, very interesting. I think I want to I want to stick on the opponents one because I think that's very interesting. I think Alistair Black, and I've mentioned this before, when it comes to where do I think he will go in the future. Every company will want him. Every company will want him. I think it's the same as when Andrade was released. I think there's certain talents that some companies look at, and not that they give a hard pass or anything like that, but for whatever reason they might be an unrealistic option for them or something like that. Or they just look at them and say, maybe too expensive, or I don't realize, I don't really know how they fit on the roster in that kind of view. So for instance, Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman is a great example of this. Impact Wrestling will look at someone like Braun Strowman and they'll say, obviously, if we could get Braun Strowman in, that would be a game changer. I mean, Braun Strowman, is he really going to drive the needle? Again, I don't know if any talent, frankly, coming into Impact Wrestling is going to drive the needle because of the television network they're on. They're on Access TV. The, I, I've said this joke so many times here on the channel, but the irony about Access TV is that nobody can access it. It's such a limited distribution that anyone coming, Kenny Omega came into that broadcast and it only went up to, was it 221,000 live viewers on Access TV? And that's a massive number for them. That's Kenny Omega. 
So anyone that comes in isn't going to spike those ratings because of the Access TV network. So it doesn't matter if you bring in Braun Strowman, Alistair Black, whoever. But I think they look at someone like Braun Strowman Impact and they say, look, obviously, if we could get Braun Strowman in, that would be a massive, massive deal for us. Former Universal Champion coming off of WWE television. He's a big name. He's a big guy. There's a guy that you can build the promotion around. Obviously, there's a financial element there that I really don't know if Impact can afford. I've mentioned before that Impact do have money. They don't have maybe AEW money. They don't maybe have WWE money. But Anthem Sports and Entertainment are a well-funded and well-backed company. And if push comes to shove, they can give Impact Wrestling money. But Braun Strowman, we're talking about a lot of money. And again, what's the return look like there? So talents like that, Impact Wrestling looks at and goes, ah, maybe not, maybe not. I mean, maybe if we could pull it off, that would be amazing. But, you know, maybe not. Other talents like Andrade, when Andrade was released by WWE, Impact Wrestling did have conversations with Andrade. Ultimately, Andrade decided to go to AEW. And that was primarily a money thing as well. And that's Andrade wanted a certain amount as a downside guarantee. Impact Wrestling doesn't really do that. They'll do a little bit of a downside guarantee, but the way they structure their deals nowadays is more a case of we'll pay you per appearance and we'll pay you for the dates that you work as opposed to just a downside guarantee. So that was where that one kind of fell apart. They were close with Andrade for a one-off appearance. What that one-off appearance would have been, I don't know. Probably Slammiversary, something like that. Maybe Impact Rebellion, considering that was April and Andrade was released in March. I don't know. I don't know what those negotiations really look like from the reports that come out there though impact was interested in andrade in the same vein that a lot of those talents that were released by impact wrestling in april we already know that impact wrestling is interested in those talents that were released whether it's chelsea green whether it's the iconics whether it is samoa joe whether it's whoever was released by the company wwe in april we know that impact wrestling is already interested and has probably reached out at this point if evidence from the good brothers is good enough that when they were released last year impact wrestling was on the phone to them after 15 minutes of their release you know that impact wrestling have reached out alistair black to me is an name like Andrade that every single company will want. Is he a game changer for every single company? Again, you can never predict these things. I don't think that's fair to say. But when it does come to Alistair Black, every company will want him, whether it's Ring of Honor, whether it's Impact Wrestling, whether it's AEW, New Japan Pro Wrestling, the NWA, whatever company, GCW, any company will want Alistair Black to show up on their show because they just will because he's incredibly talented. He's got a, a real unique character. And everyone knows, frankly, that if you look at it, he could have done so much more in WWE. And that character, when he was in NXT, that Alistair Black character was red hot. And people were already looking at that Alistair Black character during his NXT period and were saying, when this guy goes to the main roster, this guy could be the next generation's version of The Undertaker or something like that. Now, does that mean he's going to be The Undertaker? No, before people get angry. But they were looking at that saying, well, this can be the next dark, brooding, maybe not supernatural, but just that dark, brooding talent. He can be something just completely different, completely special. And it didn't work out for him in WWE. Why? Why don't a lot of things work out in WWE? Corporate politics layers and layers bureaucracy vince mcmahon bruce pritchard i mean there's a plethora of reasons why it didn't work out a company that has a ginormous creative team that is devoid of any creativity maybe it's that but alistair black is definitely going to be one of these people that's wanted by all of these companies including impact wrestling so for alistair black to say in this interview with renee young renee paquette whatever you want to call her for him to say in this interview that two of the first names or the two first names he's he says he wants to face off against when he's asked who do you want to work with the first two names he says moose sammy callahan if i'm an impact wrestling executive and i haven't already reached out which i tend not to believe i think given their track record i'm pretty sure scott demore delo brown or tommy dreamer or whoever's got a connection to alistair black i'm pretty sure would have reached out tommy dreamer actually helped start zelina vega Th uh, thea trinidad into the pro wrestling business thea trinidad is married to alistair black it's not too much of a step to say that he would have good connections with Selena Vega, therefore he could have good connections with Alistair Black. He could pick up the phone and call Alistair Black five minutes after he was released. So I find it very, very, very difficult to say that Impact Wrestling wouldn't have already reached out to Alistair Black. Whether or not Black's interested, or he's probably got offers already from the likes of AEW, Ring of Honor, New Japan, etc. That's the difficulty there. But for Alistair Black to say, you know, the first two names I want to face off against is Moose. I think that's testament to Moose's growing reputation in the world of professional wrestling right now. Considering that Moose is staying with Impact Wrestling, there's only one place that uh, the Alistair Black versus Moose match is going to happen. That's inside of an Impact Wrestling ring. Now, obviously, officially, officially, Moose hasn't re-signed with Impact. But as far as we're aware, expectations are that he is going to re-sign with the company. It was reported by Dave Meltzer in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter a couple of weeks ago that the expectation was that Moose is going 
going to stay and that he either won, has signed a new deal with Impact, or the expectation is that he's going to sign a new contract. Moose denied this, uh, but I think he's just playing coy on social media. He hyped it up the other day, didn't he? After Andrade's debut uh, on Friday Night Dynamite last week, he hyped it up that he'd already that he'd signed a contract with somewhere, but teased, or who's it with? Where is it with? And most likely it's with Impact Wrestling. So if Alistair Black is going to face Moose, it's going to have to be an Impact. Sammy Callahan's another one. Sammy Callahan re-signed of Impact Wrestling at the end of last year. So if Alistair Black wants to face Moose or he wants to face Sammy Callahan, that has to happen inside of an Impact Wrestling ring. And that's exciting. I think... Obviously, it's interesting as well that those are the two names that are going to be possibly challenging for Kenny Omega's Impact World Championship this Saturday at Against All Odds, which we will be doing a watch long for on a reaction stream. So be sure to subscribe, bottom right-hand corner, click the notification bell. You'll be notified when we go live for both of those streams. But it's interesting that it's interesting that those names top his list. Now, obviously, he mentions other names. He mentions John Moxley. He mentions Kenny Omega, Christopher Daniels, Jungle Boy, Will Hobbs. They're all AEW stars. Brian Cage as well. And he throws in a couple of Ring of Honor names and... A couple of other names as well. So look, the options are available to him. Hand on my heart, if you said to me, Owen, you have to predict today where Alistair Black is going to end up. I've said before, I think he goes to AEW. I think AEW would really want him and will be desperate to sign him. Again, is he a game changer for which other company he signs for? Who knows? Who knows? How can you judge if anyone's a game changer? I think if he goes to AEW, he has a lot of creative freedom and he can... You know, write the music the way he want the way he wants to write it, and I think that's all Alistair Black really wants. He fits that style as well. He, he's unique, and look, obviously, he was not used to the best of his abilities. Anywhere he goes, he will be a success, and there'll be a line of companies and a line of promoters that want to sign Alistair Black to a contract. There is going to be no issue for him in finding work. I have no doubts in my mind about that. I just think if it comes down to a bidding war, which it may, then the same outcome will be what happened with Andrade. And that's what it came down to, essentially, before Andrade negotiated with Impact, with AEW, with Ring of Honor. What did it come down to? It came down to money. It came down to a bidding war in the end. It came down to Impact not being able to offer or confirm that sort of downside guarantee with Andrade for his contract. AEW could. AEW are more well-backed. Obviously, they have the Khan's billions. Arguably, the Khan's... Well, it's not arguably. It's fact. The Khan's have more money than the McMahon's. Now, does AEW have more money than WWE? Probably not, but... My point is that if it comes down to a bidding war, most likely, most likely, there's only going to be one winner unless AEW decide that's just, that's ridiculous, that that's just stupid money. So again, my prediction's always been that I think Alistair Black goes to AEW, but look, anything's possible. Anything's possible in the world of pro wrestling. So Alistair Black does have interest. Alistair Black does have interest in working with Moose or Sammy Callahan. So who's to say that if he does sign with AEW, he doesn't, be part of the working relationship between AEW and Impact Wrestling, right? That's not out of the realm of possibility either. So who knows? Maybe Alistair Black does show up. He certainly isn't going to be showing up at Slammiversary or anything like that. His uh, non-compete clause expires at the same time as, ever, as everyone else, which I think is August 31st or something like that, just right at the end of August, start of uh, September. So we'll have to wait and see. But it's exciting that he's mentioning some Impact Wrestling names. So who knows? Who knows? Anything's possible. Anything's possible for the future. A couple of other things I did want to talk about before we wrap it up on today's Impact News video is Eddie Edwards. Uh, Eddie Edwards has stated his desire to never, ever, ever, as Chris Jericho would say, leave Impact Wrestling. Now, Eddie Edwards has become one of the faces of the company since signing with the promotion in 2014, winning multiple world championships with Impact Wrestling. And he's always been featured in a prominent position and given the opportunity to be himself. Edwards states that he has no intentions of leaving Impact Wrestling. Now, in an interview with Lucha Libre Online, this is what Edwards had to say, quote, that's exactly what I want. When asked if he wants to remain in Impact Wrestling for life, he said, quote, there is no, no other option. This is what I want to do. It's something that I really believe in, and it's something in my heart that I take a lot of pride, not only in what I do, but what Impact does. I feel we can do so much more and continue to ride this momentum and continue to get better. I want to be the guy at the forefront of it, and I want to help be one of the phases of Impact. I know how good it is. I know how good it can be. I want to be the one wearing the Impact shirt, I'm waving the impact flag. I want to retire an impact player. Now, of course, Eddie Edwards underwent appendicitis surgery on May 17. He teamed up with Finn Juice, David Finley and Juice Robinson at the Impact Under Siege event against Impact World Champion Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers, scoring a victory for his team. But that bout was taped in April. Now, I think this, this again, it's not, that's nothing really surprising when it comes to Eddie Edwards. We know he's an impact guy. We know he's an impact player. We know where his loyalties are. And th that's why... 
Again, I don't know what the initial plan was for the Slammiversary main event, but looking at Impact Under Siege, that's probably why, for a period there, the plan was to have Ed Eddie Edwards versus Kenny Omega. That's why Eddie Edwards won the Impact World Championship last year, because Impact Wrestling officials, during in a company where lots of people come and go, lots of people come and go because Impact use uh, imp some talents come into Impact and use it as a platform to go to AEW or WWE or just to make their name bigger, or they sign a short-term deal, or they don't commit to the company, or whatever. They don't even sign a contract with the company. Impact Wrestling officials know that Eddie Edwards is going to be there irrespective of whatever comes to him. You look at the options available to him. Is he going to go to WWE? No. He had his chance in NXT. They didn't sign him. And then I don't know if he holds a grudge, but he's not going back there. He looks at AEW and he looks at that roster and goes, no, no, I don't know where I'd fit on there. And frankly, where would he fit on there? Would he put it this way? When it comes to Eddie Edwards, would he be in a better position if he signed with any other company now? The answer is no. He would not be featured in a prominent position with any other company that he signed for right now. He has got it the best he is going to get it in Impact Wrestling. He is loyal to the company. He's built up some stock, some popularity, and some credence there over however long he's been there, seven years at this point. And he likes it there. He's happy there. So that's why whenever they get in these situations in Impact Wrestling, whether it's last year at Slammiversary or whether it was meant to be this year at Slammiversary, Impact Wrestling officials and executives know that Eddie Edwards is going to be there regardless. They can count on him. They can back him. And I think that's why they put the title on him You know, recently, last year, and the consideration maybe was this year as well, is because they know, look, if we need a long-term champion, if we know we need someone that's going to be around for the next 18 months, two years, Eddie Edwards isn't going anywhere. He's not going to leave us when his contract expires. He's not going to jump to WWE. He's not going to go to AEW. He believes in the product. He believes in the company. He's a company guy. And in a smaller company like Impact, you don't tend to get that that often. So that's the situation with Eddie Edwards. So again, not, nothing really super surprising there. We knew that was the case anyway when Eddie Edwards, we know about his loyalties and his desires in Impact Wrestling. But there you go. You can kind of understand the situation a little bit more now when it comes to Eddie Edwards. Uh, finally, what I did want to talk about is the NWA. Now, I know this is kind of an Impact Wrestling video, but I wasn't sure where to put this in. But I thought that is probably the best place for this because it could involve some Impact Wrestling talent potentially. And that was the announcement made during yesterday's edition of NWA Power regarding an all-women's pay-per-view. Now, veteran pro wrestler Mickey James looks to have joined the National Wrestling Alliance, which is no surprise when we were speaking about it in April when she was released by WWE. The place I said I thought Mickey James would go to would be the NWA because of obviously her husband, Nick Aldis, being the NWA World's Heavyweights Champion. She goes to most tapings anyway. I thought it was it's a natural fit that she would go there and she has. It's tick. Uh, but last night's NWA Power season premiere opened up on Fight TV with Mickey James and promotion owner Billy Corgan announcing two big pay-per-view announcements. It was announced that the NWA will return to St. Louis on Saturday, August 28th through Tuesday, August 31st. The promotion will be taping two pay-per-view events that weekend. The August 28th show will be the NWA's first ever all-women's pay-per-view uh, titled NWA in Power. The second will be the NWA 73rd anniversary show titled NWA 73 to be held on Sunday, August 29. Now, Mickey James will serve as the executive producer of the woman's pay-per-view. She noted that this is something she's wanted to do for a long time, but has been cut off at every opportunity until now receiving a real opportunity to make real history with the NWA. She thanked Corgan for allowing her to handle the woman's pay-per-view and show that women's wrestling makes money and deserves the same top of the marquee prime real estate as men's wrestling. James noted that she wants the top top women's wrestlers in the world in, for the NWA pay-per-view, even if they are under contract or not. Uh, Camille is the current NWA World Women's Champion as she just defeated Zarina Deeb at the When Our Shadows Fall pay-per-view this past weekend. So interesting, very interesting this one. Again, when it comes to Mickey James joining the NWA, not surprising at all. That was something that I predicted uh, in April. And I think a lot of people did as well. I'm no, I'm no Nostradamus by any stretch of the imagination with that one. I will find this fascinating to see what WWE does about this. And I know some people will say, well, WWE ain't listening to what the NWA is doing, all that kind of stuff. Most of the time, no, they're not. When they see the NWA is doing an all-women's pay-per-view, I wonder how long it will take for WWE to do Evolution 2. Because this is what this spins out of. This is all it spins out of. Mickey James, she's right in her promo. She's honest. She said last night, this is something I've wanted to do for a while, but I got cut off every single time. She's done interviews talking about it. She said in an interview, I wanted to do an all-female TV show with WWE. And they said, no, it wouldn't draw. I wanted to do Evolution 2. WWE said, no. The first Evolution pay-per-view didn't draw it. They did terrible, all this kind of stuff, which is a lie. That just isn't true. That just factually isn't true. Now, we don't know the streaming details and of, of WWE pay-per-views or anything like that. We don't know that. 
But the idea that the woman's pay per view didn't draw is laughable. It's not true. Because look at YouTube, look at the YouTube metrics. Some of the most viewed segments on WWE's YouTube channel are Evolution matches. The Ronda Rousey Nikki Bella full match from Evolution on YouTube has something like 70 million views. Now, that's, that's got to mean something. You've had two, two out of the last three WrestleMania main events have involved females. Bianca Belair versus Sasha Banks. WrestleMania 37, night one this year. WrestleMania 35, Charlotte Flair, Ronda Rousey, Becky Lynch. So two out of the last three WrestleMania main events have featured females, but you can't do a female pay-per-view. Why? Because WWE doesn't want to. Mickey James mentioned this before, and it's true. It's true. WWE did Evolution as a PR stunt. That's what they did as before, because they just signed that deal with Saudi Arabia. They were going over to Saudi Arabia for the first show in April, then again in November, and the females weren't allowed to perform on that show. Rightfully so. People went, that's BS. That's not right. In addition to all of the human rights stuff, and all of the other questionable policies and everything going on with that deal. People are saying that's BS about the females not being able to perform. While their male counterparts go over there, earn a ton of money on appearing on this lucrative show, the females have to stay at home, sit at home. Yes, they get their contract money, but I'm pretty sure they'd want to wrestle. And WWE went, whoa, whoa, no, look how progressive we are. We're totally progressive. We've got a female paid for you. And they did it. And it was historic and it was great. And everyone watched it, said, really enjoyed it. Look forward to it happening again next year. And it didn't. And the reason it didn't, WWE's dis disguise and saying why it didn't happen is, well, we had the, the first ever women's match in Saudi Arabia, and that was really important. We didn't want to overshadow that. We didn't want to overshadow that at all. So we didn't do women's, the women's evolution pay for you for that. That's an excuse. You could have done both. Why can't you do both? The reason they didn't do both is because they didn't want to do both. That's the difference there. Last year, they certainly could have done it. And they went, well, pandemic, all that kind of stuff. There was no excuse last year. There was none. You had everyone at the Performance Center, everyone at the Thunderdome. It was, it's never been easier to do a pay-per-view of everyone there, and they didn't do it. This year, they fired a load of their female talent. The female talent roster in WWE is thinner than ever. SmackDown's got like four female superstars on there. Despite this, female wrestling still draws in WWE, and they know it does. Why do they know it does? Because they put it in the WrestleMania main event, because they put it at the top of the hour spots on Raw and SmackDown, because it draws good ratings, it draws good numbers. And people that have the old, outdated, antiquated theory, female wrestling doesn't draw, you're just living in the past, and you don't want to come up to the present. Now, I'm excited for this. I'm very excited for this. Again, Mickie James has wanted to do this for a while, and I think a lot of females have wanted this for a while too. So is the NWA as big of a stage as WWE? Of course it isn't. Of course it isn't. But what we could see here is a situation where female talents from lots of companies come together and deliver something great. Obviously, there's not just going to be people from the NWA there. One would assume there's going to be people from AEW because of the working relationship that AEW does have with the NWA. I don't know if that's Britt Baker. I don't know if that's Nyla Rose. I don't know if that's Ikara Shida. I don't know if Serena Deeb comes back. Thunder Rose is part of the NWA roster anyway. So as far as those names, I don't know. When it comes to the Impact side of things, I don't know what the relationship is between the NWA and Impact Wrestling, frankly. I know Billy Corgan has his heat with Impact Wrestling. It looks like maybe that's kind of softened recently because of the whole Kylie Ray situation. Of course, the NWA had to negotiate with Impact Wrestling to facilitate the Kylie Ray move to the NWA. And again, Billy Corgan did have his issues, shall we say, with Impact Wrestling. But... Uh, since then, I'm pretty sure there's been an NWA World Heavyweight Championship match inside the Impact Zone. I think it was an empty arena match. It might have been Nick Holdis versus Josephus or certainly Tim Storm. They had a match inside of the Impact Zone. So maybe that relationship has been, been rebuilt. I don't know. But if I'm Impact Wrestling, I would look at this and say, of course we want to be part of this. And if I'm Ring of Honor, I would look at this and say, look, we've just relaunched our women's division. What a better way than to advertise our women's division than be part of this show. If I'm Impact Wrestling, I would say, what a better way to prove to everyone that our women's wrestling is the best in the world and sending over Deanna Parazzo, sending over Sue Young, sending over Jordan Grace, and maybe even more, Chelsea Green, the Iconics, whatever. This is going to be a big moment. And I mean, obviously, it's smart promoting by the NWA as well, but... It's going to be fascinating to see truly how quickly WWE reacts to this because I really won't be surprised. Truly, I will not be surprised if we get an announcement about Evolution 2 happening at some point because WWE can't be outdone by anyone else, remember, even though they're the ones that should have done this a long time ago. 
But look, guys, as always, this is just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on all of these stories you've spoken about today? Impact Wrestling, talking about Alistair Black, his potential opponents coming to Impact. Eddie Edwards saying that he wants to stay in Impact Wrestling for life and the NWA announcement about the all-women's pay-per-view. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll do my best to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys, talking about Impact Wrestling, AEW, WWE, New Japan Pro Wrestling, NWA, all things pro wrestling here on the channel. So be sure to get involved with the community. Drop a comment below. All opinions are welcome. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button too. Really does help us out here on YouTube. Go up the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestle News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right -hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or have you come across this video today. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.